and I just pop in. It's it's not to anyone in specific. Is there anything from your college days you feel didn't prepare you for the pros? I think the uh, the timeline that the college schedule is built on, where you know you only have two months of, of the actual season, um, is not realistic. Um, it does not prepare well for for the professional game. Where the professional game, you know, it's a nine month long season. It's uh, it's very different from from the college season where you're, you're going for two months hard and um, adjusting yourself um, coming out of college to then going into the pro to the professionals and, and kind of getting your body right uh, to be able to play nine months instead of two months uh, is I think a, a big a big challenge. Yeah, massive. Anything else you boys have seen? Yeah, going off that, I think like playing through injuries too because the season's only two or three months long. If you're injured for a week or two, you're missing like 10%, 15% of games. So you just want to play through injuries, but playing a professional team, like I don't know what it's like right now, but a nine-month season, it's okay to miss one game to be healthy for the next four or five weeks. Um, that's why I was chatting to the lads here and you're trying to do extra because uh, you're, you're trying to get better and that's saying just relax. Your body's going to... It's going to be sore and tired throughout the season, so just take it easy and look after your body just as much as possible. So, I yeah, feel as though, yeah, the, the nine month season and the, the two months, three months is, is a big, big difference. And just on that, what what have you boys? Maybe to the, to the other boys here, what have what have you had to do or adjust to to prepare your body to go through the nine months now? Yeah, um, a lot of people talk about like hitting the rookie wall like midway through the season because your body's just not prepared for it. For the past four seasons in college, you played uh, two months, three months. So adjusting to that uh, lengthier season is definitely something you have to focus on. Uh, really pay attention to taking care of your bodies. Um, a lot of people think because you're fresh out of college, you're one of the young guys, um, you can go forever, but you really just have to focus on the off the field stuff and then uh, you'll be ready for the for So the is that season. is that specifically diet for you boys? Is that certain plyometrics or is it stuff stuff everything. you're building up specific yeah. muscle groups? It's everything it goes from stretching to to eating right to sleeping right. It's basically everything. I feel like if you're if you're in college you're um most people they just follow the the instructions of the team and don't really do anything else beside that. Um, but but if you're a pro, I feel like it's necessary to also do stuff on your own, um, like stuff that you need for yourself, or you feel your body could use it. Yeah. How about how about going into? So let's say you go from freshman year all the way up to senior year. Now, some of you boys are are in that rookie year. Some of you boys are going into your second. Um, Polly, I think you're the granddad of the group right now. Um, what's what are the what's the process in getting through year to year? Is it a gradual build up, or do you have to make drastic changes straight away? No, oh, yeah, you make the change you know, right away. I mean, but if you you pick it up right away when you get with the group. The first week is hard. I mean, it's hard for everybody. And then during the season, to be honest, for me personally, it was just you like kind of cruise with the boys. And then season after season, I just feel like it gets better and better. Like your body's more ready, you're more prepared mentally. Though it is, like that's like the big difference. The more experience we get, especially I think for me, the more experience you get, the more comfortable you'll be with the group, and the more you'll like, you'll be like, I think compared to first year and your third, fifth year, like you can look at the old boys in the league, like they play with. Like nothing in their mind is so good, you know. Yeah. So I think that's what makes the difference. It's all experience. Simone, how about on your side with the goalkeepers? What have What have you seen in in the change from the college scene now into the pros? Well, well, what surprised me, I think, for the first like weeks with this United was the the speed of the game. Like, is is just so different from college? As, I mean, obviously because the level is uh, is so different, so much better at this level. But yeah, I had like a uh, few days to, to adapt uh, to a training that is so much like, higher and uh, 
in the professional level. Yeah. So, so with that being the first question, is what from college did you do you think you picked up that helped you? To everybody, is there anything out of college you felt that that helped you when you when you got into the pro? Yeah, I think kind of. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. I think just going through the going through the years and, and getting older and having more responsibility from going from a freshman to a senior. Um, most of us were captains and leaders on our college team, so just growing from the freshman to uh, coming into preseason, not knowing what to expect, uh, being the main guy on the team just helped you prepare for the pros because you've been through the cycle already. So once you get there as a rookie, it's kind of like, okay, I'm a freshman again. How did I navigate? Stuff like that. And, and you get through it, like uh, Paul said earlier, it gets, it gets better and better every season. You're more prepared and, and everything uh, comes easier. Hmm. I think uh, maturing in school um, for four years has, has helped me. Um, I don't think of if as a freshman or a sophomore, I could be able to, to hang with the guys in training. Um, so letting like, my body grow and my mind develop to, to be able to play right now. Um, so I think those four years definitely helped me mature and be ready um, because that was a goal for all four years in college to be um, at this level. So I think that that's what helped me. Okay. So polite. Um, I think the the maturity the maturity is a big thing because when you when you get into college, most people are, are far away from home, and they're they're all by themselves. You know, it really teaches you not only about soccer, but it teaches you about life and how to how to take care of yourself, uh, be responsible. So I feel like that um that is what what college really helps uh, a lot of young guys do. Yeah, I think the, uh, the preparation and the actual the habits um, that I learned in college were, were very important because the schedule was so condensed. Um, you had to develop those habits to be fit to play in the game. So developing the professional habits throughout college, I think, really helped me prepare for the professional level. Here, here's okay. one. Okay. Sorry, Simon, go on. Okay. I was thinking for the, for the team because uh, college is good to get games too because... Uh, when you go to the professional level, there is more competition, so it's uh, harder to get games. In college, I think there's less competition, so it's a good way to get games and get uh, confidence too. Uh, I'm going to throw one out to, to Pauly and, and, and Aaron, because you, I think you boys had a bit of a different path, you know, coming up from so-called lower divisions, you know, and then up into the Division 1 and then into the pros. Is there anything you feel you picked up on that path that maybe lads that just played Division 1 or just played Division 2 or haven't transferred around, is there anything you feel you picked up in that process that others wouldn't? Yeah, I think uh, the most important thing that I learned in college was like when you play like the US Open Cup and then you play like, kind of like those pro teams and that was like the big difference and the reading really United that's really helped a lot you know, getting those big games. And then after even in the league, like you kinda of play like the top player most of the time. So like all those guys that play in the summer, they're all the yeah. guys that kinda want to keep at the end. So hmm. it's a it's a good it's a good test. So compared to the season, especially like I was in G two, like that was that was terrible sometimes, you know. Yeah. Difficult. But uh, like kind of like grouping all those like player who wants it. Doesn't matter what level you are, you know, just wants it. Mm -hmm. That's different. I think I like them more. Yeah, obviously coming over to America, I had no idea what I was getting myself in for. I, I didn't know anything about NCA, NRA, D one, D two. So um I was really just coming over with, with a blind phone basically and um and then after a year I realised how good players are from, from some from Reading. Um, playing with, with all these guys in, in D1, I realised how good the level was. Like, I don't want to get myself there. After a good freshman year, I thought I had a really good freshman year, and then um, being able to, to transfer out um, to a school that could help me um, on my path to become a professional footballer. So I think that was was pretty important to know and to know what you want and how you're going to get it. Because I don't think obviously I would have been in this position if I stayed all four years at NEIA. So I think it's about how bad do you want to be 
professional soccer player and, and, and what sacrifices you're willing to take. So here's one, here's one for all of you now. Is there any advice you've gotten from any pros in your dressing room? You don't have to name who they are, but any seasoned pros or any coaches that have been in and around the game, now that you're at the pro level, is there any advice they've given you that has really, you feel it's maybe moulded you or you're living by those words or it's changed your mentality? Yeah, I mean, I have a couple of teammates, most of the time they talk to young guys, they're kind of like the leader in the locker room. And what they would say is just like, like the, the grind never stops. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, you just never stop. doesn't matter if you play, doesn't matter if you don't play. Like, you just never stop on it. Then your mentality always has to be right. Like, I mean, I guess sometimes in college you could be like, I hate this, like, I don't want to do this practice, it's stupid or it's not good enough. But now nah, it's not like this. You have to show up at practice. It's 100 every time. Like, unless you're a DP. And maybe you can do a little bit whatever you want. And even that, uh, like, you, that, for me, that's the most, like, that I've got from the boys, the older ones. The grind never stop. And you have to be ready when your time's come. Because yeah, last yeah. year, for me, only, like, I only know my personal experience. I, was, I started a game after being two months not playing. And then three months later, I started another game. And I was able to do them. I mean, obviously, with more games, maybe they'll help me, but like, you just have to be ready. One day, the coach is like, oh, are you starting? Like, <laughs> you ain't going to be like, oh, I didn't practice well because I was not happy. I'm not playing. And uh, you just got to take whatever you take. Especially when you get drafted and stuff, like you have to make your way up. It takes time. Some people take less time as well. Like Some people, they're going to be rooted of the year and stuff. Your story is going to be different than everyone else, but mm -hmm. you can never stop. That's the big advice from the boys. Brilliant. Any others? I have a couple of uh, older teammates with me that um, basically did the same thing. They, they talk to the younger guys that come in, especially as a, as a first-year pro. Um, and they, they basically just say, put the, put the team first, and then... Uh, then the individual will come second. Um, so that means what, what Paul said, just keep working hard every day, although you don't play. Um, just just keep working for it, keep putting good sessions in for the teammates that do play, because um, that's also important. Um, so that's yeah, basically that that advice from from the older players that um, that the team always comes first and then the individual. Brilliant. Hey, Kamal, how, how about how about going okay so from college then into professional then professional into international has there been a massive jump from from orlando to the international scene or do you feel orlando prepared you for it or being being in the pros prepared you for it um i, I believe being in the pros prepared me for it because uh for, fortunately for me there were um, some injuries in my position early on when I first got to Orlando. So right away, I was thrown in and, and able to, to show what I can do. So I got a good amount of games through preseason and, and opportunity. And so when I got to the international level and my first couple camps, I, I didn't play at all. So just being there, being around the guys, observing, um, that helped me a lot. And when I finally got my chance, it, uh, it did help me a lot, especially paying in um, in Conga Cap. I feel like a lot of the teams um, that you come up against in qualifying in Nations League and stuff like that, they aren't the most ethical like uh, teams or more island teams with more of the physical aspects similar to the college game and I think similar to MLS as well. So I think I was well prepared for the situation. Yeah. Is there anything anything there at the, at the international scene that you feel you, you cannot see at MLS? You cannot learn from. You, you can only learn from it at the international level. Um, I, I say no because the quality of players in the MLS is getting better and better every transfer window. Some of the DPs and international players that are coming in and some of the academy players are, are very skillful and, and a lot of them play for their national team but CONCACAF is very well represented in the MLS so, so no I don't think so. Brilliant. Right so we've we've about five minutes left here okay I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this question out to you. What 
does nobody tell you about college? True, your whole process and going from college to the pros, what are the things nobody ever speaks about? So each one of you guys, with, with, our, with our experience in Reading, we've had none of it's been a straight road. Some of you have been been in youth academy. Some of you have been at a certain level away from home, then come into college, then gone into pros. So every everyone tries to, to say it's going to be – a straightforward journey uh, to hitting your goals. It's it's never that. But is there anything you feel that's that's a misconception out there going from college into the pros? Is there anything you feel that's not well represented and compared to what the reality was for you boys? I think the the knowledge of the the big schools. I mean, if if people come in and that was, I think for for Aaron, me, and then Paul, probably a big thing is that from Europe you don't really know what you're getting yourself into. So it's basically trying to 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 get a great school for you to to get that path realistic into the pros. Um, but coming in from like all across the world you don't really know what schools are the better ones. Um, I feel like that's a big problem. Hmm. The problem is the top open. The English that's, that's the problem. <laughs> You're still struggling with that. <laughs> That's the biggest problem for me. We'll get yeah. subtitles for you yeah. when this video goes out. We'll get subtitles. <laughs> Probably for all of us except for Zandi and Kamal. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I, think, I think for me it was, um, I was pretty well informed because of being American and knowing the college system to begin with, whereas, you know, Paul Aaron, they, know they, they really had no idea, like, even internationals on my team that, that came to Villanova, they were like, dude, I, I just came here uh, because your coach, you know, he convinced me, and that, that was it. I didn't really know what I was getting myself into, so I think I was I was pretty well informed, but, but others, it was, you know, pretty different. Right, so we go, last question. Just for, for people that are out there now during during this, this lockdown or whatever situation they're in right now, what are you boys doing right now to keep yourself, keep that edge? What are you doing at home to, obviously you're getting stuff from the clubs, but what are you doing specifically that you feel once everything opens back up will make you ready? I just want to say to, uh, sorry, sorry, come on, go, go ahead. I'll go fast. Um, for me, I think it's uh, focusing on the little things that you normally wouldn't do. So a lot of the uh, stretching, a lot of the stuff that goes under the under the under the radar when people look at pros and stuff. So like the stretching, the the dieting, like really focusing in on that and taking a a bigger uh, bigger chunk of time to to dedicate to that. So like stretching, yoga, cooking. Um, running, reading, um, doing things for your brain, watching old footage, seeing how you can get better. Just uh, a lot of the stuff that people wouldn't be doing during this time. For me, I, I think it's a, it's important to stick to a, a routine. Um, so I get up, I get up every day the same time I would if I was getting up for training. Um, I would do my workout the same time as we would train with the team. Um, and then, like, like Kamal said, it's kind of staying busy and uh, keeping your mind occupied with watching soccer, watching all the footage, um, reading books, cooking foods. Um, but I think routine is pretty important. So when all this thing dies, dies down and, and get ready to get back into it, you're not, you're not sluggish because you're ready. You're, 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 used to the, to, you're used to the times and, and then you're ready to come back into, back into training then. Exactly the same here. Every day, get up at the same time, do your workout. And then basically just stay busy for the rest of the day, whether it's reading books, chatting with teammates about whatever. It's uh, yeah, just just keep your mind occupied and stay positive. Yeah, I, think it, I think it's a you know a great time to also you know get you know, advantage on on your other other players in the league because you know it's it's up to everyone to to do their own work and you know it's a great time to put in that extra work because we're you know we're not playing games so. Really trying to you know push yourself and, and do extra to to make that gap you know bigger and separate yourself from the pack. I think it's a, a great time for that. Simone, do you do you feel there's any difference now being a keeper to to outfield players in terms of what you have to be doing during this time? 
Well, I, I have like a specific uh, program for the people to stay in, to stay in a good shape, and uh, but, but no, it's not really like nothing special. It's too much like the like the players say. Yeah. So self discipline being a key. Yeah. Right, boys. Thanks very much.